Chapter 16 of the Claywell Book, Leading, Delegating, and Collaborating. Nurse leaders influence patients, families, and others toward a vision or a goal. Nurse leaders empower others, communicate a sense of direction, and demonstrate self-confidence. The characteristics of a nurse leader is competence, trustworthiness, self-assuredness, decision-making ability, and prioritizing skills. The task of leadership is envisioning goals, affirming values, motivating others, achieving a workable entity, managing, developing trust. Management provides the structure and direction necessary to accomplish goals and outcomes that are known and where there is a system in place to achieve the outcomes. Managers is any staff member who bears responsibility for the work of others anyone who must ensure the completion of an organizational process, and someone who guides a process as necessary to accomplish tasks to achieve organizational outcomes. Followers are not a passive process. They use personal behaviors that contribute to the healthcare team's goals, demonstrate collaboration, influence, and action with the leader or manager to accomplish the goals and outcomes. Should be willing to question debate, compromise, collaborate, and act as well to be accountable for those actions. Characteristics of a leader. Leadership has the ability to influence outcomes through positive interactions with team members. The characteristics are to recognize the strengths and weaknesses within the team, manage them to affect a positive outcome from a plan of care, empowers all team members to do the jobs of which they are most capable, delegates assignments, tasks, and duties to the best individuals for the particular jobs, Defining the leadership role is managing, directing, or supervising others as a means to control a situation. Managing patient care is overseeing the plan of care, directing others to implement the plan toward achievement of the desired outcomes, and a manager has leadership qualities and should act as an advisor and influence the beliefs of others. Defining the leadership role is both an expectation and an earned role. Decisiveness, sound judgment, and ability to articulate fluently. It is self-knowledge, respect, trust, integrity, vision, learning, communication, and display of integrity. The leadership approaches change and influence through empowerment of the nurse and the team member. The approach depends on the personalities of the team in the situation and the nurse can incorporate one or more styles of leadership to meet the needs. Open communication is needed among the group members and clear goals and objectives must be a part of the plan of care. Each member must understand their role in meeting the goals. Democratic, bases decision on consensus, mutual agreement. Delegates duties according to the strengths within the team. Autocratic, also called authoritarian. Uses power to influence others and affect outcomes. Laissez-faire is non-directive, deliberately intervenes as little as possible. Transactional versus transformational. A transactional leader is a traditional boss whose decisions were made without staff input. They can motivate followers in three ways. Offer rewards, monitor work performance and correct the staff member immediately, wait for a problem to occur and deal with it later, relies on power and authority to reward or punish performance, and usually found in stable work environments. Transformational leadership seeks and welcomes input from staff, brings out the best in people, identifies the common values, is committed, visionary, examines the outcomes, and empowers others. They are charismatic, inspirational, motivational, and intellectually stimulating, and they treat others as unique individuals. They motivate followers to reach the fullest potential and support creativity, uniqueness in problem solving, and an individual spirit of freedom. Servant leadership emphasizes service to others, including employees, customers, and a community as a first priority. They focus on the needs of others, empathize with them, and is attentive to the concerns of the followers. Servant leadership involves listening, empathy, healing, persuasion, awareness, foresight, conceptualization, commitment to the growth of the people, stewardship, and building community. There are four domains to leading, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. It refers to recognizing and regulating emotions in ourselves and others, and can improve staff relationships, improve patient outcomes, motivate others, resolve conflicts, and create a healthy work environment. Leadership has a moral or ethical dimension. 
and the five principles of ethical leadership is serving others, showing justice, respecting others, honesty, and building community. Leaders' ethical responsibilities are to treat followers with dignity and respect and be sensitive to their interests, needs, and concerns. Delegation is assigning tasks or duties to an entrusted individual and getting the work done through others. It's directing the performance of one or more people to accomplish the organizational goals. The principles of delegation is that the nurse must take responsibility and accountability for the provision of nursing practice. The nurse directs the care and determines the appropriate utilization of any assistance involved in providing direct patient care. The principles of delegation is that nurses cannot delegate teaching, assessment, judgment, planning, and evaluation. The decision of whether or not to delegate or assign is based on the nurse's judgment, and the nurse delegates only those tasks that the healthcare worker has the knowledge and skill to perform. The nurse would delegate the right task under the right circumstance to the right person with the right direction and communication and with the right supervision. The nurse would delegate within the education and scope of practice of the LVN and the nursing assistant. Issues and delegation. Patient safety must always be maintained by understanding the scopes of practice and the skills and abilities of the other healthcare team members. Delegating fairly does not mean delegating equally. The issues in delegation, according to the American Nurse Association, elements that may not be delegated is the initial and subsequent nursing assessments that require professional judgment, which means admissions, discharges, and transfers must be done by the nurse, including vital signs, determination of the nursing diagnosis, goals, plans of care, and progress, interventions that require the application of professional knowledge and skills. Issues in delegation is that if a person resists, provide deadlines avoid over-supervising, and first assess the reason for the resistance or refusal to perform a specific task, and then take the appropriate action to remedy the situation. Remember that if a patient has not been assessed by the nurse, delegation cannot occur. Now, if you're trying to determine a new nursing assistant skill level, then directly observe them perform a task first and then discuss the outcome. Asking them to explain a procedure is not the same as performing that action correctly and safely. There's a difference between saying how to transfer and then actually doing the skill and showing how to transfer. Collaboration. This is a partnership agreement between two or more individuals who have a mutual agreement to work together. Successful collaboration is the team must agree on a plan of care and the prioritization of the components of the plan. It is excellent communication among the team members and mutual recognition and respect. Accountability. The nurse must ensure that the plan of care is implemented, evaluated, and possibly modified so that the patient outcomes are the best they possibly can be. Professional advocacy. Advocacy is one individual promotes someone else or someone's idea. As a patient advocate, the nurse would promote the patient's decisions in a non-judgmental manner. The nurse's responsibilities are to assess patient understanding of the plan of care and ensure that the patient has all the information needed to make the informed decisions. So in essence, the nurse's responsibility is caring, has a commitment to preserving the patient's humanity, their personal worth, and their dignity, speaking up concerning unsafe conditions because patient safety is paramount, advocating for the public and the nursing profession, involvement with professional organizations, and becoming active in legal issues concerning healthcare policies, collaborating and advocating through the medical plan of care. The physician is the manager of the medical plan of care. The nurse must anticipate the medical direction, understand the orders written, and foresee how they will affect the patient and the patient care. The nurse must understand the complexities of patient care management in order to advocate for the patient. Decision making. This involves a decision that is focused on trying to solve an immediate problem. Problem solving. This is a purposeful, goal-directed process aimed at identifying and selecting options as part of problem solving, plan change, or improvement. Decision making is defining the objectives, identifying the options, identifying the advantages and disadvantages of each option, selecting the option, implementing and evaluating the result. Effective decision-making and problem-solving process is to gather the data from many sources, learn different approaches to problem situations, observe the positive role models in action, talk to a colleague or a supervisor who is an effective problem-solver and decision-maker, perform research to increase your knowledge base, 
and take risks using new approaches to problem solving. Conflict management. Conflict is opposition of feelings, beliefs, desires, or goals. The types can be intrapersonal within one individual, interpersonal between or among two or more, intragroup within one group, or intergroup between two or more groups. The guidelines is that they need privacy and a willingness to talk openly, calmly, and rationally. If not, the process has to be stopped and discussion starts at another time. Sacrifice resolution is when someone accommodates the other by essentially sacrificing his or her position and allowing the other to have their way. Competition resolution is when one or both of the parties work competitively instead of cooperatively toward a resolution. One side wins, the other side loses. Win-win resolution is a collaborative method. Two opposing parties come together to decide on mutual goals. It's designing interventions to meet these goals and working together to evaluate the outcomes. A nurse has a conflict with another nurse. The nurse meets with the other nurse and resolves the conflict. Which type of conflict occurred? This would be interpersonal. Number three, 